getting the data uh, I mentioned in the neglected uh, source um, because what we saw in the past in the Netherlands as well is how, how do we manage our water at this moment and, and what can we do, what do we have available to manage our water. So that will come in the second uh, half of my presentation. Uh, just to give you a short overview about our company, based in the Netherlands, uh, you can see it somewhere in the, in the middle, um, next to the German border, and our facilities are, are mentioned, uh, you, can, you can see it over there. Um, it, it's, it's not an extremely big company, you can see here, this is the whole building uh, with about 100 people, so it's not, not that uh, extreme. What we got in 1911 is the designation royal, uh, existing one, 100 years, and um, uh, that, that was our celebration year. So that, uh, uh, from that point we, we uh, started the royal. Um, what we did so far is if you look at the bottom, we, we, are, so we have started with hand orders uh, as a blacksmith. And uh, after that we were growing from the agricultural field to the water. And now we are also managing the water with our uh, data logs. <coughs> the company itself, in, uh, in, in the structure, we have the holding, the Royal Life Account, and under it we have three companies. And if you go from uh, your left side, uh, I become Archie Switch Equipment, where I'm, where I'm directly from. Then we have the deep well trailing, it will come back later as well, but we go to a depth of uh, 250 to 300 meters depth. For monitoring wells, and we have our training facilities, which will come later as well. Our product range is uh, is defined, and, and I mentioned in the beginning we came from the soil part, and via uh, the water we go to the complete monitoring part. So we want to have our data um, in the company. If you look at the soil, um, we are um, from the past we are famous on soil sound. So something for agricultural purposes, and uh, these agricultural purposes were uh, in the field. In the field, you are growing your crops. You are you're working in the field, and you want to know what is happening to my field while working. Which crop can grow the best uh, in this in, on this location? So that is why uh, we have our sampling equipment. That's why it started with what I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, then we went to the, uh, the laboratory, because we have to do some research in the laboratory as well, but we keep it basic, so on, on, on the field perspective, we, look, we do not have very advanced uh, machines available. Um, uh, we do it also with our sister company, Sonic Central, I just mentioned in the beginning, and Sonic Central is making deeper samples, uh, undisturbed samples or disturbed samples, whatever uh, is needed. Uh, under different circumstances, so either in, in, in a very wet condition or maybe even in, in, um, in frozen areas, uh, in permafrost areas could be as well. On the water side, we focus on the, uh, um, the, the sampling again and the monitoring. And uh, for the monitoring, we, we may use a device like this just to monitor the water uh, and to have the data logs, it will come uh, later on. And uh, for the sampling, we use different equipment also to go to different depths, depending on the type of sampling which is needed. Earth monitoring, quite a challenging uh, thing for ourselves, uh, because everything involved in water and soil, we would like to monitor, because we need this important data to go to the next step, either in remediation or in product growth or something, or whatever is needed. Uh, so we need this data. Uh, and uh, what, what we try to do is look at the, the, the water circle, so from the evaporation back to the water in the ground water over here, and everything in between we would like to monitor. So uh, the most optimistic way would be to monitor 100% of the available water, um, but of course there is also some, some water water. And why is it important, uh, as you all know, uh, from all the water which is available uh, in the world, only 3% is fresh water. And from this 3%, about 2.7% is captured in polar ice, so not available directly for us. So this very few amount of water, we have to be very careful with. That 
that's why the title of my, uh, my, my presentation. Um, so we have to monitor, to be aware. Uh, also in the Netherlands, although it looks like we have a lot of water, we also have water scarcity. Because we have a lot of saline water. And saline water is, is even more worse to deviate or to decelerate. Um, carefree, uh, we call it carefree as a company. Uh, because what is important, you can see it on, on the, the second one on the top. The data is what you as experts need to use. It's not the equipment you need, you need the data. So what should be central is the data, how do we provide the data. And that's why as a company, and I was shown in the moon phase one, well, we came up with a solution uh, of Carefree, in which we say okay, we provide you data, and we'll come later on in the presentation as well, uh, and we take care of the rest. If you want to, of course you can do it for yourself as well. Um, next to that, we need training. Uh, in the second part of the presentation, I will come back to, uh, to the point of training. Why is that important? Uh, small mistakes can have big uh, um, influence for the future. Uh, we have our training center, completely equipped. Some of you uh, uh, I've already met in our training center in the Netherlands, or we brought our trainers to, to China in, in the past, uh, and especially in, in the, the government, the government which was mentioned before. Uh, also, Mr. Tsang mentioned uh, uh, about it. Uh, we, we came with our trainers to China to exchange knowledge. We don't have the full knowledge. You also have a lot of knowledge. So we have to combine this and then come to uh, a total solution. Um, as a company, we are represented in, 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 in some countries in the world, uh, about 17 countries, in which we have uh, representatives which are trained uh, also in the Netherlands and we train people on vacations. And some of our partners from, from China are also present in, in here. Um, worldwide cooperation with a lot of different uh, organizations, institutes. Uh, just a few of them are mentioned over here, but uh, if you look at it, it worldwide, it would be a list of, uh, it would be a booklet. Uh, 100 years of existence uh, makes, makes you quite uh, uh, known in the world. Um, here uh, is, is yeah, well, let's say, a statement from my, from my side, uh, in which I say, okay, we have a lot of knowledge from the past, we did it already a hundred years, and also if you look at the past of environmental research, it, um, it started in the mid-70s in the Netherlands with the case, and since then we are just building up experience, but we don't have all the knowledge yet. Uh, every case, and that's what will come during the day as well, uh, every single case has single solutions. It's not a standard thing you just take out of a book. You cannot learn it, you have to learn by experience. And uh, that will be shown as well. Going to the second part, uh, one of the important things uh, I want to, to point out is, uh, is what is mentioned here, Scientia Potentia Est, is, is the Latin for knowledge is power. And coming back to the data I mentioned in the beginning, if you measure, you know something about the situation, you have the data available, and if you have data, accurate data available, then first you can act and you can do something. Then you can make your final plans. So if you look at remediation, and you go to phase one of your remediation project, the, the, the site investigation, you get the data, you know the size, you know the pollution, you know everything, then you can really make your plan of action. Before that, you don't know, well, not know nothing, but is hard to do it. What I want to show is the, uh, the, a small movie, uh, and that's uh, a movie about uh, our control room we have in the Netherlands. Uh, what we do over there, we monitor a few thousand wells in Europe and, and abroad, and uh, I just want to show you what could be a solution to manage your data, to get the data in and to manage it.
so what you saw here was, was just a very short introduction about this, uh, this uh, control room. We have six screens and, and we have, uh, at the moment, we have around eight people looking at six screens and advising customers about the data which is coming in and what is happening with the data. Uh, make a prediction about the groundwater table because there's rainfall expected. What can we do? How can we uh, already foresee uh, the, the in the coming days what is going to happen to the groundwater? Do we have to uh, uh, put water in another location because we will have flooding or we have uh, the agricultural fields will receive more water? So we lower the groundwater table so we can capture more water. That's how we try to control the water, but then again, uh, as mentioned, we need data. What kind of data? I mentioned in the beginning all the data related to the uh, groundwater, but there's more. Um, if you look at uh, the pollution part, um, we need to have some extra data, we need to do some sampling. Um, and uh, the, the sentence is, is, I think, quite clear. Don't save money in the beginning because you will pay more at the end. It might be a bit of, little bit more expensive from the beginning. It looks more expensive, but the result will be higher as well. Um, the definition of salt pollution, okay, that, that's uh, one thing. But if you look at a graph, you can see that the pollution can, can uh, you can have pollution in a lot of different ways. It's not only the industry, but it's also the landfills. It's uh, the agricultural purposes in which we use the fertilizers, uh, so the choose of fertilizer. Sediment sampling, we discussed something yesterday about sediment in the river. Uh, that's also polluting, it's going to the other side, it's, uh, it's coming in your agricultural fields, it's affecting your food security. So it, it's, all, it's all related to each other. And at the end, it's going down to our aquifers, and from the aquifers we may extract water for uh, the, the bottling industry, so maybe we have uh, polluted beer in, instead of uh, good quality beer. So we have to uh, look at all the aspects, and that is also what we need to sample. So we want to sample all the, uh, the, uh, the different uh, locations in which uh, pollution may cause problems at the end. So we have to secure this. And, um, I uh, already mentioned that the threat is, of course, uh, what we do with the, the, the water, in this case, groundwater afterwards. Do we use it for drinking water? Or is, um, we, we may not call names, but for instance, a cola industry using the water to make uh, the cola or to make another type of drink? So that's what we have to do. We have to monitor it to get data. And there's different possibilities. I mentioned groundwater data on, on uh, quantity and also we have to look at the quality and if we have to look at specific parameters we can use a device like this it's, it's not big, it's small but it's very effective because you can get a lot of data uh, in here from the uh, surroundings and from the areas and this data you can put in, in, in your management system and then you can uh, start doing directions with this data um, you need to prepare things, you have to make deep wells, you need to sample, you need to sample your soils in different depths. It's not only the top layer, it's also the layer just above the aquifer, but also under the aquifer. So you have to go deeper and deeper to make sure that all the other layers are also uh, uh, monitored. There's data, data, data. Uh, and the devices are there. It's not only, it's not that we have the best, well, of course I have to say that we have the best devices, but uh, uh, there are a lot of devices available which are accurate. Yep, so you, you can use them. Uh, if you look at the research, uh, I mentioned in, in the pre-research when you make a sample about the phase one of the, the remediation. That, that's where uh, the most important uh, data is gathered, the samples are gathered, you bring it to the laboratory, and then you really start uh, uh, putting your, your data into a plan. The, uh, what you have to be aware of is, and then we come again to the, to the effect of cost, safe, uh, cost uh, uh, saving, is if the rubbish is going in, if it is not accurate, if it is not, and we have seen a lot of examples in the past, if, if, if that's going in, the end it might be, it looks good on paper, but what is it, does it do in the long term? So know what you measure. Uh, to conclude my part of the presentation, this is a very, uh, it 
it's a known song, I don't know if you know it yourself, but if you look for cadmium, and at the end, it, 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 looking at the equipment, the cadmium was in the stoppers. So there was no cadmium disease anyway. It, 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 what, there was nothing. But look, uh, using the raw materials, we have serious problems, and this goes to uh, the highest level. So what we can conclude after this is that it is very young. I mentioned it in the beginning. It's, uh, we started in 1979, with this case in, in Lekkerkerk in the Netherlands. Since then we are, we are on a learning curve. And we learned a lot in a short time, but we are still not really learning. Um, equipment and training, yeah, like you see here, is, is of course very important. Get the right data, put it on paper, and then you can make corrections. We are ready with a lot of companies. We are here together. Are you ready? Mr. Jack, you mentioned. Uh, you're ready. We are ready to go. Thank you very much.